What's going on guys? How's everybody doing today? Welcome back to another Vinyl Pickups video. So, I got a really good video for you guys today. Um, this is going to be my favorite Vinyl Pickups video in this series so far. Um, because over the weekend on Saturday with my dad, we went to a record store in Cambridge called Cheapo Records. And uh, it was awesome. Um, you know, being in a record store is like heaven because you're surrounded by records and cassettes and CDs. And it's just, uh, it's just awesome. Um, doesn't get much better than that, does it? I mean, I don't think so. But um, yeah, I got some really good stuff to show off, though. I got four records to show off to you guys today. And uh, they're all four really good ones. Um, yeah, uh, this Cheapo Records, I know it was in Cambridge. I, I know it wasn't in Harvard Square. But I forget like the area that it was in. I know it was in Cambridge, and I know that it was uh, near a club called the Middle East. But uh, that's all. That's all I know. I know it was in Cambridge, but I just forget the area name off the top of my head. But um, yeah. So I'm gonna start showing off these records. So without further ado, let's get started. So first record. Um, this is uh the second record by the greatest jazz fusion band of all time, in my opinion. Um, I know that there's a, there's a jazz fusion group that comes as a close second, but um, this band is the greatest jazz fusion group that was ever around. Birds of Fire by Mahavishnu Orchestra. I saw this in the store. I was like, I gotta get this. I um, Before I saw this on the racks, I actually had in my hands Mr. Gone by Weather Report, but I saw this in the store and I was like, I gotta get this. I mean, I never listened to this album like before I spun it. Uh, the only thing I heard by Mahavishnu Orchestra was the debut, the Intermountain Flame, and that album is just absolutely amazing. And um, before I put this on, I was like, this is not going to be as good as the debut. And then I put it on and uh, it did not disappoint me. This is a great album. I think it's right up there with the debut. It's tied for me. Um, I mean, it's just great musicianship. You know, like the, the musicians on this album are just like some of the greatest musicians ever. I mean, this right here, like this lineup on this album, is like one of the greatest lineups in music history. I mean, it sucks that they only stayed together for only two albums in a live album, but you know, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, for the lineup, you got John McLaughlin on, on guitars. I mean, one of the greatest guitar players of all time, you know, previously played with Miles Davis, you know, great guitar player. And then you got uh, Billy Cobham on drums. Billy Cobham, one of the greatest drummers of all time. That guy is an absolute monster behind the kid. I mean, Jesus. I mean,. That, I mean, that guy's drumming on this album is absolutely fantastic. Some of the greatest drumming you'll ever hear in your life. And then you got Jan Hammer on keyboards. You got Jerry Goodman on violin and Rick Layard on bass. I mean, this lineup is just... Doesn't get much better than this, does it? I mean, I don't think so. But um, <laughs> but for songs, you got the title track, which is, um, I mean, legendary for a reason. I mean, that song is absolutely amazing. And then you got... um. The song called Miles Beyond, which is a tribute to Miles Davis, which, I mean, is really cool. And then, um, I might butcher this title, but, uh, Celestial Terrestrial Commuters. That's that's a mouthful to say, but that's a really good song. Um, and then you got the, I think this is the interlude. I think it's, uh, Sapphire Bullets of Pure Love, which is, I think it's only like a 24-second interlude. I mean, I don't even know why they put it, even put it on this album. And then, uh, after that, you got Thousand Island Park, and then you got Hope for side one. And then for side two, it opens up with... An almost the almost ten minute song called One Word, which I mean, it's like some of the most mind blowing music you'll ever hear in your life. You got you got the guitar, the keyboards, and the uh, the violin just all just switching off, and then you got a great Billy Cobham drum solo, and then you got a great bass line in it. I mean, Rick Laird is like the least talked about member in this band. He was he was a great bass player. I mean, he he recently just passed away, I think, like on the fourth of July. You know, great bass player, rest in peace. But um, yeah, I mean, so, like, if if you've never heard anything by Mahavishnu Orchestra, look up the song "One Word" because that song will absolutely blow your mind. I mean, just great stuff. And then you got the song "Sanctuary," and then um, after that you got "Open Country Joy," which I mean, I I that's a really cool song because it starts off like really quiet and then boom, it just gets loud. I mean, I absolutely love that. Sorry, I just had a voice crack, but um, I absolutely love that song. And then um. And then you got Resolution to end it off. This is a great album. Um, it's right up there with the debut. This and the debut are tied for me. Great stuff right here. First two Mahavishnu Orchestra albums are just all killer, no filler. Um, 
And then the live album that they did. I mean, I've heard, I, I, I still haven't listened to the live album yet. I still got to listen to that. I mean, I've heard that that's absolutely mind blowing as well. And then after that, the lineup is gone. New lineup is in. I mean, it kind of sucks because I wish that that lineup stayed together for like another couple albums. I mean, you talk, you'd be talking about the greatest lineup in history, but I mean, they only stayed together for two albums in the live album, which sucks. But you know, it is what it is. Moving on. This is a band that is, um, one of the greatest of all time and um, very influential band in the kind of like hard rock, heavy metal. Um, I saw this album in the store. I mean, I've never heard like this era of the band, any like albums by them. I've only heard like one album by this band in full. Um, and I saw this in the store and I loved the cover and I had to get it. And that is Straight Between the Eyes by Rainbow. Um, Mr. Richie Blackmore. I mean, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. I mean, this is... um the second to last album that they did before Deep Purple were reunite with uh, Perfect Strangers you know that you know as we all know that album did huge that album did huge business you know big tour you know Mark Twain line it back but um this is the uh, the Jolyn Turner era of the band you know I think Jolyn Turner is a great singer um like I I I've, I've heard like a lot that like this era gets a lot of like flack for like for like it being too accessible and too mainstream, and I listen to this album and it's pretty rocking. I mean, I mean, pe- like people kind of complain that oh it's not as good as the Dio ever, but like I mean this, this I mean this album is still pretty rocking and pretty heavy. I mean, I mean I th- I listened to this album and I thought it was awesome. Um, I think this album's great, but um for the lineup you got Richie Blackmore on guitars. I mean obviously, and then you got uh, Roger Glover on bass. I mean Roger Glover. Um, uh, Richie Blackmore's bandmate in Deep Purple, formerly, and then um, we'll be again two years later when Deep Purple get back together, like I said before. Uh, then you got Bobby Rondinelli on drums, you got Joel and Turner on vocals, and David Rosenthal on keyboards. I think this album is awesome. This album's produced by Roger Glover as well. This is a great album. Um, I This was a lot of fun. Um, this is the second Rainbow album that I've heard in full. I mean, the only Rainbow album I heard in full before this was uh, Rainbow Rising. Which, I mean, that album is legendary for a reason. But uh, yeah, for songs you got um, you got Death Alley Driver, great up tempo heavy rocker. And then you got Stone Cold, which was kind of like the big hit off the record. Um, I mean, what a great song that is. I mean, I don't care if it was a hit and I just played on MTV. I mean, what a great song. Stone Cold, I thought I knew you so well. I mean, ah, uh, just what a great song. I mean, uh, it's a very just a very moody song. I mean, I know the video is kind of stupid. I mean, it just like kind of cheesy but you know what who cares i mean what a great song and then you got uh bring on the night dream chaser and then you got tight squeeze i mean great great stomping tune i love that song um and then you got tearing out my heart to end side one and then for side two you got power which is uh has some great riffing from richie blackmore i really did that one a lot and then miss mistreated and then rock fever and then it ends off with almost seven minute song called i call eyes of fire which is a really kind of cool song. I really dig that one a lot. So, Straight Between the Eyes by Rainbow. I forgot to mention, this came out in 1982, by the way. Second to last album before Deep Purple Reunite, like I mentioned before. Great stuff. Alright. Next one. So, this is a band that I think is very underrated. Um, it's kind of, kind of like Thin Lizzy. Like, they're only known for one song. And um, I've only heard, like before I, I saw this record on the racks. I only heard two albums by them in full. Um, they're only known for the song "Easy Living." And you might know who I'm talking about, and that's Uriah Heep, Abominog. I mean, look at that album cover. I mean, that's. I mean, I saw this in the store, and I was like, I gotta get this. I mean, it's got this cool looking devil with you know its mouth open. You got the saliva coming down. Oh, it's just awesome. You know, this album looks like heavier than it actually is. This album is actually very accessible. Um, yeah, Uriah Heep, I think, one of the most underrated bands, along with Thin Lizzy. I mean, this band is also only known for one song, which is Easy Living. Which, I mean, that's a great song. I mean, I'm actually, I actually like that song better than Boys Are Back in Town. Because that song is, like, not as played to death. Sorry, I had another voice crack. But, um, yeah, um, so, like, this is, um, so, like, this is this isn't the classic lineup like like was like that they had in like the early mid seventies you know they don't have like David Byron or Ken Hensley or um or who's the other guy I was talking about they all, I forget the bass player's name but um 
Yeah, but like the only like classic lineup members you have left is uh, Lee Kearslake on drums and Nick Box on guitar. Um, but yeah, like the rest of the members, you got Peter Goldby on vocals, you got Bob Daisley on bass, and John Sinclair on keyboards. Um, Lee Kearslake and uh, Bob Daisley previously played with Ozzy and um, one of Ozzy's first two solo albums, Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman. Um, but um, yeah, this is a this is a great album. Like I was kind of. Like, I didn't know what to expect when, um, I thought this album was going to be really heavy, but it wasn't. I mean, I, th I thought this album was a lot of fun, though. This album sounds like, a, sounds like these guys are having a blast, you know? It's a, it's a really good album. Uh, it starts off with Two Skits to Run, which is a good, heavy rocker. And then you got On the Rebound, which is, um, song sounds very accessible, you know? It's got, like, really cool kind of sense in it. Um, and then you got Chasing Shadows. Like, On the Rebound and Chasing Shadows sounds like they could have been played on MTV a lot. I mean, I, I don't think that they were, because, I mean, you're right, he were like a very kind of they weren't really well known here but um two great songs right there and then you got prisoner and sell your soul to end off side one and then side two you got that's the way that it is i mean what a great song i mean i absolutely love that song and then uh you got think it over which is another great song hot night in a cold town and then you got hot persuasion and then it ends off with running all night with the line which i think is a really cool song um uh, this is a really good album I'm, I'm gonna be listening to more uriah heap I'll be diving deeper into their catalog because I really like this a lot. I mean, that album cover is just absolutely awesome. You know, like when I saw this, I had to add this to my collection. Great stuff. All right. Funny story. Um, so this album right here, like, so like I like so like at Cheapo Records, they had um they had like like a like they, they had like a it's kind of like what I call a bargain bin. Which I mean, like, there's like records in there that like cost like, like there was like the three dollar section, and I found this in there because I mean, I'll search that I'll, I'll search like the three dollar section because like I mean I'm kind of just I'm kind of the type of guy that's like you know what you never know you never know what you can find in like that section, and um, funny thing is that um this is this is actually a double album but this is only half the album which I thought was kind of funny, but I mean you know I don't really care because I mean it only cost me three bucks that's um. Exile on Main Street by the Stones. There's only size three and four of this. This is a double album. I mean, you know, this is um very different album for the Stones. I mean, it's not really different because I mean they've done like stuff like this before. But I mean, this album's like very kind of like bluesy, very country, kind of country. You know, there's some gospel stuff on this. But I mean, I don't know what just fell up there. But um, to be honest, I'm not like really like the big, a big fan of this. I mean, at least like like. From what I've heard, like the Sat three and four. I mean, I was actually gonna like listen to the whole album, and um, you know, and like talk about the whole album. But like, I only have Sat three and four, and um, I only wanted to uh, like talk about like what I listened to. So um, yeah, I got I gotta pull. I should get the actual record out because I gotta find out what songs. So um, so I gotta look. So if, um. Side three, it starts out with Happy. Happy, I think, is a great song. It's sung by Keith Richards. Um, and then after that, you got Turtle on the Run, which, eh, that song is... I thought that song was kind of very noisy to me. I wasn't, I wasn't really that big of a fan of that song. And then you got uh, Ventilator Blues, which I thought was a really good song, really good guitar work on that. And then and after that, which was uh, I Just Want to See His Face, which I, th I thought that song was not very good, in my opinion. That song was just uh, very forgettable for me. I, I just... I don't know. I know that's kind of like a gospel song and stuff. I just, I don't know. I just, I just thought that song was very uninteresting to me. And after that, you got Let It Loose, which, I mean, it was okay. And then, uh, side four, you got, um, so I said, well, All Down the Line, which was a great song. Really dig All Down the Line. And then after that, you got Stop Breaking Down, which was a gr great blues rock song. Really dig that one a lot. Great, you know, great sizzling guitar work from Mick Taylor and Keith Richards. And then you got Shine a Light, which, I mean, yeah. It's okay. I mean, it's kind of a gospel song, and um, when I was listening to that, the record kind of started skipping, so like I didn't really like really hear it that good. But um, like the stuff that I heard, I mean, I wasn't really too thrilled about. And then ends off with Soul Survivor, which I mean, it's okay. From what I've heard so far, I'm not really a big fan of this. I mean, this record I feel like for me is very um, I don't know. It's just not really my thing. I mean, I, I mean, it's not. I don't. I don't hate. I don't. I don't like. Not like the, I mean, I don't. I don't hate this record. I mean, I think there's some good stuff on it. I'm just saying. I mean, I, I'm not like the biggest fan of it, and it's not because of like the genre. Because I mean, I like country stuff, and I and I love blues, but um, it's just like I feel like 
I feel like since this is a double album, I feel like there's like a lot of filler on it. You know what I mean? I mean, but because I mean, I feel like it's kind of hard to like. It's very hard to like make a great double album. The only like one I can think of is physical physical graffiti by Led Zeppelin. Because I mean, on that album is classic after classic after classic. But I mean, I feel like I don't know. I feel like there's not like a lot of like great double albums out there. I mean, I don't know. At least from what I've heard. But um. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna try and listen to the side one of that because I still haven't listened to the side one yet. I mean, I probably should have before this video, but I kind of, I kind of want to just like make this video quick for you guys. But uh, yeah, uh, there you have it. I mean, this was really fun going to a record store. I mean, if you, if you guys like ever like have a record store in your area, you should go there because I mean, it's fun. It's a lot of fun going to a record store. But um, yeah, I just want to say uh. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had an absolute blast making this video. Uh, it's my favorite final pickups video I've made so far in the series. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate if you guys would subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss one of these videos. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Peace out. Rock on.